A lot of things have changed over the last 12 months, haven't they? Some in ways that are good and powerful and significant, and other ways that are just unpleasant and, and not so fun at all. But change is always part of our lives. It's one of the, the certainties in our lives is that, is that things aren't permanent. Things as they are today will not always be. And things in the future, when they become whatever is becoming, they won't always stay that way either. Impermanence and change is a part of our life. Sometimes changes take place over a long period of time, and sometimes they happen very quickly. Transformation that can change in just a few moments. And today we take a closer look at a story of transformation of Jesus himself in the scriptures. We are continuing our stories. Today we conclude our series, Follow Me, in which we are uh, beginning uh, the new year, considering what are ways that we might follow Jesus in our everyday life, as we look into a new year and promise and trust that things will be new and better and different than they were in the year that's passed. In this series, two weeks ago, we took a closer look at the story, first story of Jesus casting out a demon in the book of Mark. We consider that darkness can infect our own lives at times and remember that God can use us, you and me, to bring light in the midst of difficult and dark situations. Last week on Scout Sunday, we considered a heal, another healing story and how we might respond when Jesus is at work in our lives. God is at work even here and now I'm in the middle of our community, and God brings healing and hope and meaning to each one of us, to all of us, and we can respond in service to God and others. And today we look at a story of Jesus where he is transformed in front of a handful of disciples. We read this story in the Gospels, and we hear this description, he changed in front of them. He changed in front of them. Well, what does that mean exactly? So what happened on that mountain? What was it that was so meaningful that it finds its place in the gospel stories? Six days after our conversation about suffering and death, here Jesus is transformed, is changed before them. Well, something happened. We know that to be sure. It's hard to say except by repeating the words that we say there. Jesus was changed before them. Jesus was changed before them. What they were used to seeing was uh, there was no, was no longer the case, and, and something they, they hadn't seen before suddenly becomes evident. And what did they see? Something almost undescribable, it seems. Luckily, there were, there were some, help, uh, some helpful hints to their scene to help them interpret what it was that was going on in front of them. It helps them give definition to this indescribable change that they'd seen in their friend Jesus. And what in the world was going on here? First of all, there were those other two guys. Mark says it was Moses and Elijah, but how exactly did the disciples know? I mean, there weren't picture books of the great heroes of the Old Testament, the disciples didn't know Moses and Elijah. Uh, it's not likely, it's not like they'd met them before. Did they come with name tags? Were there a uh, teleprompter that was running across the screen or running around with the signs that says, hey, this is Moses, this is Elijah? Or was it one of those that they just kind of knew things where you have the sense deep in your soul that this is who it is, and this is what's going on. Maybe Moses had his famous staff. They surely would have known the stories. The staff that he held out and the seas were parted. The staff that he held up and the enemies were conquered. The staff that struck the rock and water came out of it. Maybe Elijah had on his wilderness clothes, like John the Baptist, that showed he was a man of the desert, a man uneasy with so-called human civilization. Maybe it was that wild look in his eyes. We don't know. Maybe Jesus called them by name when they appeared. We don't know because there's not a lot of attention that's paid to the two of them. They were there as supporting characters, kind of as props, as scenery for the lead actor. They, they were in supporting roles on that day. It wasn't about them. They represented the law and the prophets, the story of the people of God. They were there to draw the attention to the center of attention, to the word of God, to Jesus himself, the presence of God, Emmanuel, God with us who otherwise would have been the center of attention, in this case, help draw the attention to the one who was to save his people from their sins. Then there was the voice. The, the only words that were spoken on the mountaintop, well, except for those that were mumbled by one of the disciples, Peter didn't even know what he was saying. Even Mark tries to set them aside by, by adding the commentary. He said this because he didn't know how to respond. Well, he didn't. 
And we don't either sometimes. But we do hear these words from the heavens, these powerful words from God, similar to the ones that had been heard before. You remember a few chapters earlier, the words from God were this, You are my son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. These words directed to Jesus, but these are slightly different. They are directed to the disciples. They are directed to us. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. God, instead of speaking only to Jesus or perhaps only heard by Jesus, instead speaks to the disciples and through those disciples speaks to us. This is my son, my beloved. With him I am well pleased to listen to him. Listen to him. Pay attention. The one who's changed, the one who's transformed in front of you is not only transformed for his own sake, for this is a foretaste of what's to come in the cross, in the death and resurrection of the one that you see before you on the mountaintop. This transformation that he experiences here is one that we might have chance for life ourselves. We can be transformed because of the power of Jesus. And this story is just beginning to be hinted at, is, is beginning to be revealed bit by bit. And it happens here on this mountain with these few disciples. This is my son. I am pleased with him. Listen to him for Jesus has been transformed and there is more transformation yet to come in Jesus life and in our own lives pay attention listen listen to Jesus well what exactly are we supposed to pay attention to and and how exactly was Jesus changed when you hear the word change or, or, or the root word that, that was shared here in the Greek, metamorphosis, what do you think of? Well, uh, you think about science class, maybe. The metamorphosis that happens when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. Or maybe in earth science, when it was the rock itself, the, the rock of the earth, meta, uh, metamorphic rock, and melted by the earth, heat of the earth's core and, and flowing from one form to another. But here's the question. What, in both of those cases, what's the true form? Is the true form of the rock the, the molten magma, or is it what's, what, what it is when it's already solidified? The caterpillar or the butterfly? When Jesus is transformed on the mountain, what, what exactly is the change, and which one's the real Jesus? Well, both of them. They're all the real Jesus. When we experience Jesus in one part of our life, we experience a Jesus that might offer comfort and care and mercy and peace. When we need comfort and where our lives have been torn apart, we need Jesus to be our comforter and our shepherd. But when we are looking to move into places that we've never been before, we need Jesus to be our leader, to be the one that, that, that is, is offering direction and, and guidance and leadership and says, follow me because I will make you fishers of people. Jesus has transformed in front of them and Jesus has transformed for us because God meets us where we are. Jesus becomes the person that, Jesus, that we need at the time. Jesus reaches out to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. God is with us in ways that we can understand. Jesus transforms to walk alongside our own journeys, which can be so different from one another. Sometimes we hear Jesus described by someone else in a way that we don't really understand. And it's, maybe it's because we haven't had those same circumstances. And sometimes we experience Jesus in our own lives in ways that are maybe one-dimensional or, or uh, almost as if just a picture storybook of Jesus. And other times, Jesus walks with us in such profound and powerful ways that we can say the only way that we can keep going is because Jesus is with us. Because God, the one who created the universe, walks with us. Jesus is transformed in front of us. Our lives change from one moment to the next, from one year to the next, from one decade to the next. And Jesus transforms into the person that we need to be, the person that we need to hear from. The power of the Holy Spirit that enables us to live our life. And every moment we turn closer and closer to becoming the people that God wants us to be. Because that transformation of Jesus can transform us. The good news is that our lives can be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within us. The power at which Jesus promises to be with us. The spirit that Jesus will send after he has gone, after his death and his resurrection. We are transformed. Our lives can be changed. This is the very first sermon that Jesus preaches. 
change your hearts and lives, here comes the kingdom. So will you be transformed today? Will you change your heart and life? Jesus is transformed in front of the disciples and Jesus is transformed into the good news for you and offering you hope and light and life. Who can offer such change for our lives? Only Jesus. And we have to say yes. It's an offer from, from God, the creator of all things, for new life, for transformation to become made real in our lives today. And, and maybe you've never experienced transformation like that. Or maybe that seems far off and long ago and, and, and Jesus seems quite distant from you. Or maybe you feel that power of Jesus with you every day and you feel it right now. No matter what it is for you, we can just offer a short prayer to ask that Jesus would change our souls, that we might become more like him. And so will you pray with me? And I invite you just to, just to open your hands and, and to know that God is with us, that Jesus' power is, is transformed into the way that we can receive it even right now here at this moment. And you can repeat after me, just quietly under your breath if you like. Jesus, I, I'm sorry for the ways that I mess up. And if anything comes to mind, just, just ask for God's forgiveness. Forgive me of my sin and all that I know is wrong. Thank you that you died and rose for me. I trust you with my life. Transform me, Jesus. Fill me with your spirit and help me to follow you. In your holy name, amen.